Have you ever been in the market to buy something that somebody else has owned before? Say for example, a house, or maybe you're buying an apartment, or maybe you're buying a car. How can you tell that what you're buying really is exactly what the person is actually selling? What has happened to that car? What has happened to that apartment? What has happened to that house? Has there been flooding? Has the car been stolen? Has the car been in an accident? All of these are key things that you need to know, especially when you're buying something of value. But when you're dealing in a world where people are constantly cheating each other or where there's malware or there's hackers that are trying to take advantage of you, how can you make sure that what you're buying is actually what it really is? Blockchain can provide a solution. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how it works. Let's do this. Get ready to change the world one blockchain at a time with George Levy, your single source of truth for blockchain, Bitcoin, and cryptocurrency. In this video, I want to talk to you about the concept of having a single source of truth and how blockchain is so important to know exactly what is truth. This whole inspiration for this video came about because I actually saw a, an episode of Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil is a talk show in the United States, very popular talk show. And in this specific episode, there was a man who actually met a woman that um, he found very attractive. Now, he, he started a conversation over the internet with this woman for a very long time. He actually spent over $200,000 to try to get to know this woman. This woman was supposedly living in another country, and he had been sending money to this woman because he fell in love with her. Now, the fascinating part about it all is that the man, the woman had simply disappeared. When Dr. Phil came into the equation, Dr. Phil actually did some research and found out that the woman wasn't really who he thought she was. As a matter of fact, he fell in love with someone who had stolen the identity of someone else. So the man was a victim because he had lost over $200,000 in the press of trying to meet a woman that he fell in love with. And yet the real woman was actually someone completely different and she was the victim of an identity theft. So what you have is a poor woman who had her identity stolen and then her identity was used to actually trick this other man to spend over $200,000 to bring her back. They were both victims. As the world becomes digital and becomes more and more computer driven, it becomes a lot harder to distinguish what is truth. Blockchain can provide a single source of truth that's permanent and mutable and that everybody can see. So I wanted to record this video to give you some examples so you understand how it all plays out. So one of the things I thought about, about this poor woman that actually uh, had her identity stolen, and this man who actually lost over $200,000 was thinking, you know, it would be so much better if you actually had the opportunity to get a Carfax of someone else. You know, now Carfax, if you're familiar with it, is whenever you buy a used car, you can actually get the whole history of the car. If the car's been in a crash, if the car's actually been involved in a flood, if it's been stolen, all that information is gathered by Carfax. I guess in some ways it's kind of like getting a background check on someone else. But the key point is at the end of the day, you need to ensure that what the Carfax you're getting is really for the car that you're buying. Because then you still have to trust that Carfax is not tricking you. And uh, when you get a background check, are you really getting an accurate background check? You still have to trust that the person that's conducting the background check is actually reputable. These are big, big things, especially when you're dealing with hackers and you're dealing with people that are just scamming others. Now, when it comes to blockchain, what you have is that blockchain works all around the concept of a digital token. And that digital token, every single transfer of that digital token is recorded permanently and immutably on the blockchain. So for instance, I've recorded another video where I actually show a can uh, of tuna. In this case, it's a packet of tuna. This packet of tuna actually has a unique code for this packet. And I can get the entire provenance of the tuna that's inside this packet. And uh, this gives me visibility as a consumer to see everything that's happened to the tuna that eventually made it into here. Now, the interesting thing about all of this is that as of the recording of this, I have all the information of this tuna on that specific code. But the code doesn't tell me who owns the packet of tuna. See, the key thing is the digital token gets as far as the provenance of the tuna, but I don't have the information of who owns this tuna in that record. There's a next level, which is this mug. This mug actually belongs to me. I actually bought this mug and it was recorded 
on a transaction on the VeChain blockchain. There is a record that George Levy is the owner of this mug. So not only do you have all the information about this one specific mug, the transaction also recorded that I am the owner of this mug. And you can actually see online, you can see that I own this item. I can look it online. I can actually check it out. I even have a pin for it to verify that I am the owner of this. That information was recorded permanently and immutably on the VeChain blockchain. Now, let me give you a parallel when we go into Bitcoin. When we look at Bitcoin, in Bitcoin, every single transaction that's ever taken place on Bitcoin is recorded on the Bitcoin blockchain. So for instance, right now, what I'm showing you is a block explorer. And what we find is that the latest block on the Bitcoin blockchain is number 663,407. There's all these transactions inside that one block. Now, the interesting thing about it all is that I can actually go back to the first block ever taken place on Bitcoin. And this is block zero. Now, what you will find is that there are 663,408 confirmations to this block. Why? Because this is block zero. And after that, there were 663,407 blocks, right? So, so far, since that block, there have been 663,407 blocks. Therefore, there are 663,408 confirmations for block zero. Here's what's fascinating. Inside that one block, there is one transaction and that transaction when you go inside it has a hidden message that message says the times 03 january 2009 chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks that message is recorded on that one transaction on block zero on the bitcoin blockchain and it's permanent and immutable that was recorded back on january 3rd 2009 and it's there permanently and immutably but along with all of that there's a record of every single other transaction that's ever taken place on the Bitcoin blockchain. That's the beauty of blockchain. You have a permanent record of every single thing that's happened with every single Bitcoin that's ever happened. I hope you found this video valuable. I record brand new videos on blockchain. The concept of single source of truth is one of the most important concepts around blockchain, especially in a world where we're dealing with a crisis of truth. And as we deal with a lot of censorship and a lot of different platforms changing what truth is, the concept of holding on to truth becomes even more important. I hope to see you in future videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe. I publish brand new videos every single week, and I would love to see you. We're changing the world one blockchain at a time. See you next time.